the only unbought and unbossed politician. Why should I step back? This is Unbought Power Hour with Russia Mubarak. Good morning. So, I love good morning. Thank you. Yeah, it's um Is that like one of the walls in your house? Your yeah. House? Yeah. <laughs> nice green room. It's the green room. The green room literally. Yeah. Works out. Oh my gosh. How was your week, Russia? Oh, let's see. My week um a whole a lot of things happened. Rashida won her primary. So, hey. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited about that. And between her and Cori Bush, like, it's just mm-hmm. going to be a whole new Congress, you know? Mm-hmm. But, um, and obviously with everything that happened in the men. Um, so it's, it's, it's been a week, but I feel like it's a... Uh, something that we wake like we go to sleep praying that like you know we won't wake up to the most horrible news but i think that's what it is these days how are you how's your week yeah that's so real um yeah it's been it's been pretty wild (laughs) and um yeah man i mean there's like so much there's so much going on every day but i like i feel really um I don't know, like, yeah, maybe, I mean, I don't know how we can, we can talk about this or not, but like, yeah, what happened in Beirut, like, really, really messed me up, you know? It really messed me up, too. It's a lot. Yeah. I think, um, like, just seeing the scenes coming, it was actually the same day as the uh, Rashida's election. And I was right. Like, what is happening right now? And yeah. I don't know. I I think for a long time, I would always say, like, the people of Beirut and Lebanon, like, they're the happiest people on earth. When I was there, it was like, it didn't matter, like, where you were at 10 p.m., they would start to drum and dance. And um, it's almost as if we put this burden on them that they always have to be, like, these happy people, right? And it was just kind of like, I felt like, wow, I was always that person I would say, oh, Beirut people are always happy no matter what's happening but in reality it's like how do we alleviate them from so much excruciating pain right now and yeah donate folks there's a lot yeah. of stuff that we've been sharing all week so um yeah 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 this is this like I don't know I hope this doesn't sound trivial but just like stay with me all right that's that's all i ask right so um so earlier in the i think it was i can't remember which day of the week it was but like kind of early in the week like on the same day found out that um that cardi and megan the stallion were gonna like drop a video on friday yeah. i was like yes like yeah. what a solid collaboration right and then i think that same day um, it was announced that like Bobby Shmurda was going to get out of prison, um, this week. And I was like, oh, I, so I was like, f- first of all, you know, whatever. It's been like a wild summer, <laughs> um, in some, um, good ways and just some intense ways. And it's been a wild is a good word. Like, yeah, exactly. You know, um, but there's just like a lot of, um, yeah, just really good music um, coming through that's been helpful, um, particularly black music, you know, like Beyonce's um, Black is King, like finally watched it with my pod the other night and that was, ama- you know, whatever, like that would be expected amazing. And like the Flo Millie, the Flo Millie mixtape drop, which I've been really excited about. I'm just going to, I'm just going to put this out there. Ah. We don't have... W- right okay we don't have to get into this and it's controversial but i'm just gonna put this out there um the new taylor swift the new taylor swift is solid all right if you're into that kind of thing i taylor i don't you know i don't care what anybody says taylor (laughs) taylor's got some hits so anyway whatever good stuff primarily black folks 
Yeah, you know, Taylor, not, not, a, not a black musician, um, arguably one of the whitest, but it's, yeah, a, but she, she's, 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 she's not black, but, super white. but <laughs> blonde, she's blonde, you know, and, um, but Taylor's got some bangers, so whatever. Point is, I've been, I've been, you know, it's been a roller coaster. I see, I see you, the, the, the laugh emoji, Elisa, that's cool, it's all, it's all good, you know I stand, Taylor. Um, <laughs> So whatever it's been, it's been like wild summer, um, but music has been like one of those consistent things that I've been psyched about, right? And then I was like, "Yo, Bobby Schmurder's getting out," which like for you know whatever, like fuck incarceration. So, but and also, like just psyched about what what that means for hip hop and for the culture, and people are like really psyched. So I was like, "Yes, this is gonna be a solid week." Like you know, it's gonna, it's gonna be good. You know what I mean? Like Trump's not gonna like fuck this up, and um, and uh, yeah, Beirut. Like, it was it was just so 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 beyond. You know what I mean? Like what I what I I mean when I when I I heard that something happened and then watched that video, it was so beyond like anything I could have imagined. You know? Yeah, it is something that I think that. Um so many of us are still trying to process, I'm sure with people on the ground, but, um, but I think what is just, they've gone through so much, like the people of Lebanon, but also the refugees there, the Palestinians, the Syrians, um, the aggression of Israeli forces, their own government. It's just, they haven't in so many years been able to catch a breath. Right. There's yeah. Much, it's like survival mode of trying to be like it's trying to survive your survival mode. I feel like, and it's mm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like you know, the um, last year, not so much in the United States, but around the world, was just like a year of revolt. This year in the United States, so shout out to Black Led Rebellion. Cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But um, but last year it was like Chile, you know, Iraq, Ecuador, Haiti, Puerto Rico, um, Hong Kong, and you know Lebanon. And like honestly, I found what was happening in Lebanon to be, you know, one of if not the most like moving to me. You know what I mean? Like it was just it felt so deep, um, and. Um, like so much was being stirred up and uh so it's 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 on one hand it's so intense to go from that to even the situation before the explosion in in lebanon was like rough you know what i mean like like really intense poverty and inequality um and yeah i remember i've been from basic negligence of their government or um, just occupation of Israel from years and years and it's just it's a lot and I think seeing the people of Lebanon protest in the street I showed the world that like this is how we do this is how we unite like and like you've seen the people of Lebanon like unite in a way that was so powerful that resonated with all of us across the globe, right? So mm-hmm. to see that now and, and then how just amplified their pain has been and just, it's a lot. But, you know, it's, they are resilient, but they also, they also bleed, they also cry, they also feel, right? Like this, mm-hmm. this idea of what resilience is, is, is doesn't mean that um, it's not hard to rebuild and continue to rebuild from what you're rebuilding from before. So it's just this cycle, I think, that keeps happening in Beirut um, mm-hmm. and how people are impacted. Mm. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, I'm thinking about when, um, just like the, what you just said about cycle, like I'm thinking about... Um, I was listening to a report on the radio where like, um, you know, an older Lebanese um, 
woman was talking about like surviving the civil war and being really reluctant to participate in some of the protests because just because like she wanted so bad, like stability for Mm -hmm. her children. Right. Like she didn't want them to go through it. And, 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 and so just like, like trying not to rock the boat. But then after this, she was like, look, it doesn't matter. Like, like whether we fight or not because of the people running this country, my children are growing up in a world where they're, they're, they're dealing with this kind of violence and inequality. So now I'm in the streets, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I just think about like how also there's always like, you know, a disconnect between some of generational population, like within, I think the Lebanese community, but the Arab community, but just like how, yes everyone was in the streets but it was really led by the youth and i think mm. that that speaks volumes right like and but speaks volumes um in a sense like to your point is that this generation is having to constantly like this is their life um how do we make change but also how do we survive in this moment in this world in this life um and i just can't imagine what it's like right now considering everything that's led up to it and the global pandemic that's just a whole nother layer um Mm -hmm. on top of it right so people that are already impacted by the poverty there or um inaccessibility to medical relief any of that right so what does that even look like Mm -hmm. yeah exactly um shout out to my goddaughter yeah, Aurora. I see a lot of <laughs> <laughs> the chat. I love it. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, no, I, I so I so appreciate that because it's like, you know, yeah, it's like what happens when you have crisis in crisis, you know what I mean? Like, um, and that's just true, oh, man. I mean, I I know. Yeah, so I'm I'm just I'm very aware that this conversation can get like super dark. <laughs> but but like real though. I mean, this is just the reality. Like there's yeah. no trying like and I think this I don't want to say new world we're living in because a lot of us have been living in this world as far as understanding what it um these racist structures that continue to um impact people all over the world, right? But I, yeah. I think now more digestible for us to just mm. be or for folks to be real um or it, it's i just feel like at this point there's just no there's no filter there's no chill there's no like mm-hmm. room before it goes out it's just it needs to, things need to be said and things need to be um done so yeah go ahead <laughs> word, word, word. Well, I'm, I mean, I just just thinking about. I mean, obviously, like so much of the world, there's so much intensity. But like, just in, you know, in the Middle East, like before, so you know, like before this this like explosion, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, there's already the the like really dire inequality in Lebanon we were talking about. But, like, a lot of my attention was going to, like, in Iran, it was just, like, weeks of, like, other explosions that were, like, op- op- you know, like, op- the open secret, like, everybody knows, it was, it was sabotage from Israel and the U.S., right? right. Um, and so, like, that was happening, right? Um, you know, in Syria, man, like, talk about, like, crisis like in crisis, like I've just been, um, you know, like, um, as both like a human person and like for my, um, work, you know, like I, um, I, I, I do research and try to talk about and learn about like displaced people. Right. And like, just thinking about like people who've been displaced within Syria, and just having nowhere to go, you know, just be, just being stuck. Um, and like, we've got like COVID, you know, coming to 
refugee camps now, right? Similar situation in Yemen. Um, and then, of course, in Palestine, it's been like, you know, it's just, it's just been, it's just been, um, it's just been so heavy. So it's heavy. Yeah. 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 A lot. So t- yeah, I guess, um, tell folks what you, you know, what kind of work that you are doing, like you're talking about, you do a lot of work around displaced people and just kind of what you want Instagram folks to know about <laughs> what they do. And I think it's super relevant to everything that we're talking about up until this point, right? So. Word. Um, well, I, I think like, uh, well, you know, I think of my job, like, so, so okay, I, I work at a think tank called the Institute for Policy Studies, where I am the Middle East fellow. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, but, you know, and, 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 and it means that like, I, yeah, I, um, uh, I guess my my role is mostly kind of focusing on U.S. imperialism in the Middle East. Um, you know what the U.S. does and supports Everything the Middle East. Everything that's happening right now. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Um, it, yeah, and it you know it also means like researching the U.S. war on terror, which is of course like centered in the Middle East and central asia but like expands around the world so anyway i i think of my job like in life <laughs> as um interrogating u.s empire and <laughs> yes. you know and like just supporting its you know undoing um through like resistance and rebellion and decolonization you know um so that's my job <laughs> that's my work <laughs> Um, you know, I could like, I want to tell folks how we first met and like, you know, how really how you've been an amazing friend, but also like a comrade that like I cherish and I value so much. Um, so when we first met was, where were we? Were we at the, were you at the, was it the first day at the university it was at howard university yeah okay. yeah so, howard law school okay and like you had invited some of um the delegation from palestinian delegation to speak or be a part and i was just like mind blown about how much of a genius you were <laughs> but also like how intentional you were and i think um after that we clicked right so but also how we continued to be in a relationship and like you were there for me when I, a lot of like 2018 elections and how um you know i never forget like sitting you know at a coffee shop and just like pouring my heart out to you about everything that happened um, in 2018 elections and how you know folks even progressive folks um in florida specifically were trying to keep palestine out of the equation mm-hmm. um specific how many ways I was marginalized in that work and just seeing your face one it's a breath of fresh air but two just like you holding that and carrying that and helping me like you know remember like that this is the world that we're living in as far as this is what resistance looks like and so from there I started to think about kind of what I do I don't want to compromise my values I don't want to forfeit right anything that I believe in. So that's what led me to Unbought Power. Right. And you are some, one of the few people that I um, looked into for advice and trusted. And um, because I believe that you embody everything Unbought and what it means to be Unbought in this world, especially in this world of activism and decolonization and um, what that looks like. So I just kind of want like your experience as, you know, as you do this work, it's very easy for people to be like, well, we're working towards liberating this community. So can you just put this community aside until we, you know, and there's a lot of times where I think people are put in that position and kind of, you know, curious as to how you've been able to be so unconditional in in this work, right? And, you know, what that looks like. 
because I guess Ooh. it's you know, so yeah. easy for folks to be like so left and so like well okay, mm. accountability mm. is like what it mm. really is. like people are quoting Angela Dr. Angela Davis but like are we practicing like mm -hmm. a lot of this so I just kind of like, put that out there like you've been an amazing person in in how you know, Unbought Power came about, but also how you've been there for me as a friend and what it really means to be in a relationship is to struggle together within the struggle. And um, so I kind of just wanted to, one, thank you. Um, and just, you know, what what your thoughts are on that. Ah, well, thank I mean, I mean, I'm so like, I feel so like such immense gratitude to be in relationship with you. Um, and uh yeah. Um, okay, I want to respond to your questions and thoughts. I, I want to. Like yeah, no, it's all good. It's You're all my good. Thought partner, yeah. Five, okay? so we just awesome. Like seriously, what an honor. Okay, so one is uh, just uh, in the chat. Um, Lena, Lena, Bobina uh, asks, "Is this Hootie from Boston?" It is. It is indeed Hootie from Boston. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm in Boston. I'm in. I'm in Cambridge right now at the moment. Um, and shout out, shout out my friend Robin, who I saw join. All right, I'm, I'm gonna, I might, oh, might keep doing shout outs. Fans, please, well, is there... showing the love, and if y'all have questions too, I love it. I love to see. Well, it. I mean, it's just like you know, no, no, not at all. Like what you just said about like relationships, right? Like I, there was, I don't know, you know, whatever. I, I think relationships are kind of the essence of being human. Um, Right. But in, in particular, like thinking about that in terms of resistance, I remember there was a point, it was when Trump came in, I was like, okay, mm -hmm. like we will not survive unless we take care of each other. You know what I mean? Like we will not, mm -hmm. it, it will not happen. And, you know, I feel, I feel grateful to have been like, you know, like organizing in left spaces or just, you know, right. just like in activism, like for a while. And, you know, sometimes people are good at taking care of each other and often not, <laughs> you know, <laughs> exactly. You know, so I've evolved, like created harm and like, you know, right. Exactly. It's just like how you realize that and recognize that. Hey. exactly yeah like i've learned a lot of lessons the hard way you know um like i have my own regrets about ways that i wish i was better at caring for people and so anyway i just think that relationships are so important and um you know the the kind of the context in which um you and i met like um you know i think like b like both of us spent a lot of time or slash we just are who we are, like, located in a kind of, like, Black Palestine, you know, nexus in particular, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, and, yeah, like, part of, part of something called Black for Palestine, like, have been um, just, you know, the question of, like, being in solidarity with Palestinian freedom struggle and thinking about like black liberation and the ways that black liberation are bound up with everybody's liberation and like, the, you know, that, that black Palestine connection in particular being just like a powerful, powerful space that I feel really lucky and grateful to kind of be located in. So anyway, you know, when, when you, when you ask like, you know, like what, what I've learned just like what I've learned about like trying to um I don't know man like 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 be grounded or committed in a, in a way that feels genuine mm -hmm. like I feel like so much of that well, let me, I mean let me, let me, I, I, I guess one way to get at that is for me like I feel really lucky to have grown up like hearing stories of the civil rights movement and of black struggle you know um before me and like learning on a, on a basic level, like, wow. Okay. Here's what happened in the 1960s. Here's what happened during the time of slavery. Um, and learning about people who were incredibly courageous. You know, I, um, when I was a kid in my hometown, Albany, New York, shout out Albany. <laughs> uh, 
so we gotta move out but he wants to be here. Oh booty, you're we lost. Hold on. Let's wait. Yo, are we back? <laughs> oh my gosh. so sad. But it's so okay. nice you're here you are. Uh Lena said she missed the part how Cody how we met you and I. And we met at Howard University. Cody was helping organize this really dope panel for one of the classes um, on Black Palestine Solidarity. But welcome back. Thank you. Thanks for thanks for everybody's patience. You know, it's funny, like I, I shout out my hometown and then like just got cut, but yeah. whatever. Albany. Oh yeah, I know exactly. Yeah, it's over. All right. So, you know, Albany gets no respect, whatever. Anyway, so as I, when I was a kid, um, you know, my, um, my church that I went to was, um, it was a stop on the Underground Railroad, um, you know, for, for people escaping slavery. And like, I remember, wow. like, you know, we would have Sunday school in the basement and there were like hiding places where like, escaped enslaved people were, you know, people who would escape slavery would hide on, on their way to north, you know, to freedom. And just thinking about, like, learning about not only the risks that those people took, you know, for their freedom, but also, like, the risks that people took in solidarity with them, you know what I mean, to build this network that extended from the south into upstate New York and into Canada. So anyway, I just, like, I, I feel very lucky that I I kind of... I grew up with a, um, a a background that wasn't it wasn't like super political, but it was this idea that you're such a humble bumblebee. You just like I mean, I <laughs> you're like magic, magic, amazing. You're like you know, I just feel really grateful. I'm like all up yeah. in awe. You're humble. I mean, it's oh, I mean, it's 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 that's okay. It's one of the things like I've I've learned that like not everybody grew up with that. You know what I mean? So I feel I feel grateful. But it was like, it wasn't like, you know, again, it wasn't like, you know, I didn't grow up with, you know, whatever, like, you know, communists, um, <laughs> but, but like, but I grew up, you know, to be clear, you know, I got there, but, 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 you know, um, but, um, but the, the, um, it was this idea that like, you know, you do the right thing when challenged, you know what I mean? Like for freedom. Um, so that was that was sort of just like in the background. And then um, like in terms of me consciously becoming a political person, like it was, it was Palestine, you know, like when I was 14, like my, my, um, my ninth grade, like global studies teacher did a lesson about Palestine. He, you know, we were on the middle East unit (laughs) and we, we did, you know, there were, I mean, if there were Palestinian folks, in my hometown, like, I didn't know any. Like, I, I w- it would be, like, years before I met, you know, and actually connected with Palestinian folks. Um, but I learned that, you know, my, my teacher was, he, one day he was like, you know, today I'm just going to teach you why the Palestinians are so pissed off. That wow. was, like, how we began class. <laughs> teacher, we right? <laughs> shout out, shout out Mr. Dugan, you know? I and like he Mr. just... Dugan. I hope he's still around teaching other folks and on learning. Me too, for <laughs> real. And it was like, he, he showed us... And the thing that I remember the most was he showed us the maps, you know what I mean? Of like what land was, was, you know, in possession of Palestinians and how Palestinians were dispossessed. And I was like, I was like, is this for real? Like, you know, at a young age, like you just think people do what's right. Right. And that they understand what's right is right is wrong is wrong. But in reality, when you learn that at an early age, that people don't operate from that they do quite the opposite like systems of oppression and all that and people in power right so yeah right right and also like i i heard a very different story about palestine like i actually had heard like the you know i was like a social studies nerd so i read through my like textbook in sixth grade and it had the lot you know the last chapter on the 20th century whatever it had the whole people without a land for a land without a people like the whole thing the whole thing. And it was like, I remember they, they, it even had the thing. It was like, you know, the, the, the Israelis made the desert bloom and it was like a photo of these flowers. And I was like, wow, flowers. And wow. De- like, I didn't know anything. I was like, wow. Talk about, optics. Talk about what? Optics. Like you just associate like flowers blooming with like, no, 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And um, so, uh, you know, that's the story that I, that I grew up with. And I, um, I actually, this is like a, a funny um, or it is whatever. It's just a, a, a life tidbit. Um, yes. When I was in, uh, yeah, so I was a, I was a Boy Scout as a child. I don't know. Are you still there? You good? Okay. Yeah, I'm there. Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm like, little. there's okay. a little trauma there every time it starts to, like, cut out. I'm like, no, I'm so okay. I know. That's so real. I know. We're going to get through this. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so I was I was a Boy Scout, and, um, and I was part of, oh, are you there? Oh, there we go. You there? Yeah, my phone is there. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's, no, it's okay. The Instagram doesn't want me to tell this story about Boy Scout life, but um, okay, we're gonna try again. I'm, I'm going to make it quick. I was my Boy Scout troop met at the Jewish Community Center, um, and so I had like all like all these um, friends in, in my Boy Scout troop who were Jewish kids, and like a lot of them, when we turned 13, were were getting trips to Israel for the bar mitzvah, right? And they would come back and be like. Oh, you know, you got to go to Israel. It's so cool. You know what I mean? Like, and that's what I was learning. That's what I heard, you know, and I heard about like the kibbutzim and like, this is like, these are like these little socialist societies, you know, and how cool. Um, and um, so I, so, that, so I wasn't just somebody who had never heard about Palestine. I heard the Zionists about Palestine, you wow. know, so and, and, you wouldn't just learn about like what's happening in Palestine. You wouldn't actually like you were being taught like about Zionism and like being fed Zionism. Yeah, yeah, and I and I really like honestly, I really identified with it. You know what I mean? Like because this is the story is it's a compelling story. I mean, you know, we know the history of of how Jews have been treated. You know what I mean? And um. And when I learned about the Holocaust, like that was, it became, you know, I think about, um, <coughs> you know, when I think about the kind of like, um, like these, these things that I learned about in history that were, that formed like my, like moral compass and like, in, in kind of political compass and still like, still today, like these feel like foundation. It's like history of slavery um, and the treatment of black folks, you know, it was the genocide against native people of this place, you know, um, it was the U S atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And today is Nagasaki day, you know, 75 years ago today, the U S dropped the atomic bomb on Nagasaki, like learning about that changed my life. And it was the Holocaust. Like those were the four points of my, of my compass for like, you know, at the foundation of my worldview. And, and so age too, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I learned about that. Yeah. So, so, so anyway, like the, the idea, like the, the kind of Zionist myth was so compelling, especially, you know, I didn't understand this at the time consciously, but for like a black kid coming into an awareness of what it meant to be black like the idea that this group of people who've been oppressed for thousands of years finally come out on top, they get their own country, they make the desert bloom. It was so compelling. Mm -hmm. So when I was in class that day and my teacher was like, there's another side of this story. I was like, what? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, and then was I, you know, like, like I, was it like when you heard it, were you hesitant of the information being presented or was it like okay, okay that makes sense i you know what i feel i felt compelled to like investigate it to learn okay. about it because I, I was like huh i never heard that and um so and again i didn't i didn't know i didn't know palestinians you know um yeah. and so yeah i ended up um this is like a you know i i, I volunteered at this um it's really rad place in Albany called the social justice center. And they had this like, yeah, really rad. It was a rad, it was an awesome hometown. Shout yeah, out Albany again. Like really cool. This is like, it was great. Yeah. 
and, and like, you know, shout out to, so, so they, they, um, there was a store downstairs in this building, um, that sold fair trade goods and, um, and you know, the, it was run by adults, of course, <laughs> um, who were like, you know, people who I think did like Central America solidarity in the eighties. Um, okay. and so like, I show up as this 14 year old kid and I'm like, can I work here? And they're like, uh, sure. You know, um, it's so, like, shout out awesome. to them. No, they said, yeah, I guess so, you know? <laughs> I love it. Yeah, so, like, shout out to those adults for letting this, like, weird, you know, teenager hang hang out. And, um, anyway, they had, they had, um, they, you know what? They had Middle East Report, the magazine. And they had all this stuff about Palestine. So I just, wow. like, read it. You know what I mean? And I was like, so, I, anyway, the point is, like, I just, I felt like I needed to learn about Palestine. And I read some stuff. And I was like, okay, this story is for real. This is a group of people, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, um, and like, I, I, like, I'm with them, you know? And, like, there, there, was a, there was a button. They sold buttons at this store that I, that I volunteered at. And they had a button that said, end the occupation. And there was a point at which I was like, all right, I'm ready to buy this button, like, put it on. And, like, I, I put it on, I wore it to school, and, like, a bunch of my friends, like, in a group walked up to me, and they were like, you need to take that button off. And I was like, what? Um, and that was, that was the thing is like, I, it like, it was like, first I learned that like Palestinians who were not, you know, who were a group of people who, who were not part of the story that I had heard, you know, and then learning that, yes, they like, this is a real group of people involved in the freedom struggle. And then once I decided that I was with them, I learned immediately that there was a price to pay for that. Um, and, and the, but the thing is like, especially at the time, because, because now, you know, thankfully, and, and like, this is, you know, it, it's for so many reasons, you know, but I think centrally just like the ongoing Palestinian freedom struggle itself, like, I think people who, ne- who learn about pa- people in my position today who like learn about Palestine, like learn about it you know, the default is that it's a freedom struggle. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, like Black Lives Matter and Free Palestine. You know what I mean? Um, but at the time, it was like, it was not cool for me, for me to be like, about like a cool hashtag or like a cool like dope shirt that people would want to order to go with like whatever look is happening now. But it's it was it's it was something very unpopular. And I think that um, even now, right? Like, so I think what folks, like, like you said, like the freedom struggle, it's not new between that there was like black and Palestine solidarity, but um, it is new to folks, but it's not new, right? This has been around for a very long time since the civil rights movement. And so, right. um, but I think it's interesting, just like, you know, how was it popular to be pro-Palestinian or um, it? Like just a few years ago, people couldn't say Black Lives Matter, and these are, right. you know, so it's just kind of like, you know, all these people taking a knee now, where people under or people being like, yeah, Jerusalem shouldn't be the capital of I- Israel, and it's like, like these like very transactional um, talking points from each struggle that they're like, that's good enough for me, like, and they think that they're being um, inclusive of you know fighting for liberation for all people but um so there's just so many similarities in that sense of how people even show up for these movies. yeah yeah um, yeah it's it's i, just I mean it's something mlk and malcolm x both saw the link between different struggles and injustices um, it's true mm-hmm. right but like that is like not the i mean again even like you know serious gratitude for like getting to learn about like you know dr king and malcolm x but like that is like the the stories that i inherited about king was not like the internationalist king you know what i mean it was not like the you know radical king right i mean i i I am grateful i learned i didn't learn the like very i didn't learn the totally watered down version like i learned that he got arrested right and he fought he was a fighter but you know, it was, it was, I had to learn, you know, this history of, like, there's just such a deep well of, 
black internationalism and of black Palestine solidarity, you know? Mm -hmm. I so, read, but, go ahead. What's that? No, no, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Just like at a young age when like realizing like, cause there's this like this whole thing, like you're either Malcolm X or here. <laughs> Right, movie. right, right, right. Yeah, like, exactly. Watch, like the Malcolm X movie, and at the end, you're like, I am Malcolm X. Like, I remember being like super young and just being like, oh my God, this is it. They've been lying to us. Like, you know, so it's just like little nostalgic moments, like in like learning about, you know, what the truth is. But yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna get to how you how you came to these politics in a minute so go get ready for that but yeah i mean no. the, the the thing the, the thing that i'll say is we want to hear from oh. you. <laughs> she, she, she's like i'm asking the questions here um, <laughs> that's fair but the, the the thing is like i think the thing you know because i came to learn about wh whatever like um i mean there's so many oppressed people around the world right and i think what is at least for me, like the way I kind of came into solidarity with Palestine, it was like I learned that Palestinians were not just oppressed people, but were people resisting. And like that was the price to, you know what I mean? Like it, it wasn't, it wasn't like, you know, because, because I would talk about other, you know, I would talk about like homeless people in my hometown and people would be like, oh yeah, it's so sad. You know what I mean? But, you know, Palestinians fought back and people were like, whoa, that's not acceptable right? Like, it's okay to be oppressed as long as you don't resist your oppression. And right. that's what I had, that's what I was, you know, you know, asked to defend. And it, I'm so grateful, you know, I'm so grateful for just, I mean, obviously, like, Palestinian freedom struggle is not, for me, it's for Palestinian freedom, but I have benefited from it, you know what I mean? Like, I've benefited from that, like, being, so central to my me developing my worldview because once you once you commit to once you commit to people's self determination it's just a different orientation yeah hi I'm Hamad I got a fan too who do you look at that? it's true of course of I course know. no Cootie has a lot of fans on here so if y'all have questions like please drop them here um I think, Hoodie, like, how have you been able to, because once you become vocal and visible on unpopular, where people don't want to be included in, like, performative activism or what they think um, is, like, liberation should look like, um, wondering why you chose Green for the Wall. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny we'll, we'll, we'll get to that yeah you can, you can answer but like really like how do you con so i guess you know when we're having these meaningful conversations with folks and like asking them to be kind of like drawing a line in the sand i think this is where we're at in the world like mm -hmm. justice or you're not like you're either for equity and equality and freedom and justice for all people or you're not there's just no like gray area as far as like you know just like we're done with the peps progressives except on pa palestine we're done with the poops progressives only on palestine right but like what is that how has that looked like for you i'm just like curious like has there been a moment where because it's exhausting it's tiring and when we say like this work is hard we mean like down to the bone hard like losing sleep like um like livelihood being disrupted you know all of that so how have you been able to i also please answer like the green wall question but also like how <laughs> you navigate that yeah no. um well the um the so i you know i i think i think grasha knows this that my house all right so i until until pandemic started I was like living between Boston and DC, um, you know, which is where DC is where my, um, my, the think tank I work for um, is based, um, the Institute for Policy Studies. And so, um, and I, I maybe know that like in January, my house in Boston actually caught on fire. Yeah. Um, 
right? And so um, I have been, so I've been back here um, since the pandemic started or kind of ramped up. And my roommate, who's my best friend, I live with my best friend, um, and her partner has had us staying at his place um, in Cambridge. So this is his green wall. <laughs> he, and, but it was, which I'm like psyched about because I'm really psyched about colors. And um, yeah. so I feel really lucky. This is like the, but this, this has been my room. Um, and it's a nice it. little green screen. It's like yeah. worked out because it's so you. I know, exactly, exactly. It was kind of like waiting for me. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, but, but like, I don't know. I, I guess I try to, so, okay, I'll say this, like, on one hand, so I feel, I feel like it's like a balance, like, like, um, just like navigating, um, like, I, I think that, I think that, like, it's like, I'm fighting for our freedom, right? Like, we're trying to get free. And that's going to happen. Like, in our lifetimes, I, I think actually sooner than we think. Really? Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. I, 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 I think, you know, I, 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 it's coming. And um, so, you know, when I organize, when I learn it's it's with the understanding that like we're getting free like this is happening <laughs> you know what i mean and um it's there are it's like history affords us these opportunities you know um because it's not like um it's not all the time that you can have like a transnational you know global revolt um, but there are times when it comes, you know what I mean? Like last time it came was in the sixties. Um, and that was like the whole kind of, you know, colonized and formerly colonized world, you know, was, was rising. Right. Um, and within the colonizing world too, there were risings. Right. And like, this was an opportunity. And so, that opportunity, I, 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 I be absolutely believe that it's unfolding now, what we're experiencing. I mean, like we were just talking before about last year. Lebanon, Ecuador, Chile, Puerto Rico, Haiti. I mean, you know, and... and, and like, this is it. This is it. This is what... And it's like every time something happens, like, there's always opportunity for us to radicalize others around us in those moments, but... Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it comes in waves, you know what I mean? And it doesn't all come at once, but, and, and, and every situation has its own particulars, but there's a resonance, right? I mean, I think that's what's, that's, it's one of the things that's so special about Black Palestine solidarity is like, it's not like, they're not, they're not identical. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what it's like to be Palestinian, but, but when I, but I, when I talk to Palestinian comrades or when I read Palestinian comrades, it resonates. I'm like, that is so familiar. And I know that we have things to learn from each other and to teach each other. Right. And I, I, I believe that those of us who have, have come to that, who have come to see like, you know, the intersection and the bindings of our different struggles, that we're not the last people to come to that. We are earlier in the process, but more people will come into that. I really, really believe that. So I, so in that regard, I try to be patient, like, and I try to, um, I don't know, I try to, like, reflect on my own, like, you know, my own process, like, because I didn't, like, what I know now, like, I didn't know it all at once, it was a process, you know, and I feel like a lot of people, a lot of people now are learning much faster than I learned, um, you know what I mean, so, like, so I try to be patient with that, though I also, to be totally honest with you, there, I re, upon reflection, I actually realized there's times when I've been too patient. Um, like, like for for me, it's actually the the opposite of what a lot of people. Like, I think I've been I've been <laughs> I've been like very patient. And now I'm like, mate. Though, because then there's people that are like, uh, who's the most left contest, or who's gonna right. be more accountable, and it's kind of like exactly, exactly, exactly. I get, I'm all about accountability. Believe me, right? But like, yeah. There's there's a level of like welcoming and like um, 
helping folks uh, unlearn because we're all unlearning some kind of decolonization, right? Of exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's so like, um, yeah, just like thinking about this summer, like reflecting on this summer and what. I made a point about like the George Floyd became like a global um, solidarity movement, right? So yeah, there's like different iterations of what can unite um, freedom struggles but like not to say it didn't exist before, but maybe amplify it. Right. Right. Yeah. Like I, and, and like, I mean, just thinking about like the process, like of coming to a different level of understanding, it's complicated. It's like uncomfortable. You know what I mean? If you, right. I, like if you don't, if you feel comfortable and you feel like good, like you're in the wrong space. Like then it's, know, not, it's not, it's not supposed to be like that. Like, yeah so many moments of like discomfort and just like you know you really like you have to sit with yourself and like really understand yourself and how you're showing up but also how you're showing up for others and like there's ways of like I don't know I just feel like I've been in this work for a long time and every single day like there's something else that I'm learning there's something that I'm unlearning mm, right and it's right. like how I showed up yesterday might necessarily not be how I show up today just because if I'm really like waking up in the morning and going and like being a part of this movement, I shouldn't go to bed the same activist, right? Um, so right. I just think that it's a lot. And I don't think people, I don't think everyone understands that all the time. So it's just, even for a long time, it was hard for me to understand. It was kind of just like, you know, cause I could be that person that's like, hello, you, you there yet? Because I need you here. <laughs> But of course people that create harm and it, it is that needs to be held accountable right but it's kind of like i guess i think my biggest frustration is people that deem themselves so progressive and like right you know be appointed like they'll be like appointed like for instance aoc of florida like nah you're not that because aoc will say things like i don't care if you're mexican or palestinian children don't belong in cages where people in Florida, they can't say the word Palestine or Palestinian. Like, you know, so for me, it's like, mm. my frustration is when they are aware and they're intentionally leaving it out to push their own agenda, whether that, or that's political, individual, organizational, and thinking that they will have more wins if they do that. And not right. really understand, right, that we're never if you if you do win it's temporary it's not a true win and that's right. not what freedom look like for any books right so right 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 and i think that that's like you know there's folks who you're describing who like when i when i talk about like i've been maybe too patient like i think that like <laughs> folks who um you know whatever like like i you know i mean this in a genuine way like everybody who's yeah. trying to who to to get there and like get you know push it forward like really like shout out to everybody for doing yeah. your part you know what i mean like i i and it, it's you know it's really important and also i realize that there there are people who i've assumed were on the same page as me and like they haven't been um and i'm i've been you know i think i've been a little too patient with that or not not quick enough you know what i mean so whatever that's that but one of the one of the pieces you're talking about, like I just think about how we th there's this thing about how we understand, you know, the struggle and how we understand oppression and how we understand ourselves. And like for me, that like when I think about like the discomfort that comes with learning, that's part of it. Is like because because there's a point at which you you realize you're like, oh wait a minute, like I have a in this world, this like you know oppressive world we're all enlisted to play some role in that. Right. And mm. like, I just think about, right. You know what I mean? And, um, and I think about like, um, you know, like in black for Palestine, like one of the things that's been really powerful about that space is like circling back again and again to the, the fact that like black people are actually like, not only not the only oppressed people in the world, 
but there are times when we are enlisted in the oppression. You know what I mean? Like, um, like we have comrades, you know, in, in Black or Palestine who are Ethiopian who go to Palestine and see Ethiopian Israelis on the checkpoint. And they're like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. Like, I thought we were the oppressed. And now I'm looking at, like, this is a person who looks like me and speaks my language and is the oppressor, right? Or, or even the... Like- um, transferring oppression. Do you think it's a case of that? Oh, wh- what do you mean when you say transferring? Like, cause they're like kind of like when you become, when you're oppressed and then it's not healed and you right. transfer it to <laughs> right, <laughs> right. You, you know, you way, know. I cut off in twenty five seconds because Instagram has an hour long. Okay, but we can on it back on. Okay, cool, cool. Let's do that. I've got um all right, we'll we'll do that. We won't take um, long enough, but yeah. I wanna cool. properly give you your time. I appreciate that. Yeah, all right, I'll come back to that question.